Hi, I'm Caitlin. And I'm Charlie. And this is Milo. Milo is being a nuisance <laughs> yet again. He doesn't let us just record. Just stay, stay, stay still. He can't just stay still. Look, no, he wants. Let me do the intro. Okay, okay, intro it up. Intro. Well, intro it in. Intro it in. Yeah, <laughs> just... that's true. Okay, welcome to Outsmarting the Shadows, yeah. where we help you survive horror movies. Yes, that's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> so today we're covering my all-time favorite horror movie out of every horror movie I've ever seen in my yes. whole life, out of yes. every one I will ever see in my whole life, my absolute 100% favorite movie ever in horror. That's a lot. As Above, So Below. As Above, So Below. Now this is this falls into what I consider the the found footage. Yes. category it is absolutely shaky cam found footage category yes. type and this is this is one of the better ones you it know? is i mean found footage is horrible <laughs> no it's not you In got my you, you got the blur witch is the most famous found footage one you got the vhs the first one and the second ones are really good you're right okay the movies themselves are good but they all make me nauseous wreck wreck the original one the spanish one is better than the american one by the way yes it is yes yes um so that's that's what i consider yeah. this movie cloverfield made a lot of people sick in the theater cloverfield, cloverfield like, was really good i like cloverfield they're all great movies but they make me nauseous now this one does not yeah. This one, they 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 do it really well because all of the footage that's really shaky, you you're, they're not asking you to focus on anything. It's all blurry, yeah. so it doesn't. You can't even see anything. And they have a good reason for them to have Be a camera. Blurred. Yeah. It's not because some of these shaky cam uh, You're like, footage, why? Like, why, why are you walking around recording everything? Right. Why, why would just, this even just be a Just run thing? for your life. Yeah. And now, this one's like, okay, okay, I, I understand. I get it. The guy's filming a documentary. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Benji. Now... I got to talk to you people about the backstory of this movie, which is... Oh, there's a backstory. It's just as exciting as yes. the movie itself. Spoiler warnings. You haven't watched it. Shame on you. Go watch it. Come back. You watch it. You're back. But there's no spoilers in what I'm about to say. Oh, okay. But, you know, you should have watched it. Yes. If you, if you haven't watched any movie, you have to watch this movie. This is above all the other movies that I will ever tell I, you. I mean, I don't know. I like the, um, you know, When Evil Lurks. No, a lot that, more. that's too much. <laughs> yeah. No, this is this that's too much. That's a real horror movie that's like for people who <laughs> That's really real like, horror. That's real this horror. This is fake horror. This is fun horror. This is not fun. This is like if you love the mummy. Right? Okay, okay. With Brendan Fraser, obviously. Uh, obviously. Okay. And you love Indiana Jones. Okay, Indiana Jones. Okay. And then you also like I don't know, Poltergeist, or you like The Conjuring. Okay, so no Tom Cruise. No, God, no. <laughs> he shouldn't have even... Why would they even make that? I can't even... That was a terrible movie. Why would they Isn't make it? Isn't that a horror no movie? One, I never watched it. That's not. A, it's not a horror movie. It's not a classic horror movie. It's not a It's not a mummy movie. That's just how, shit. How I saw the trailers for that movie, I thought it was, okay, Mission Impossible with mummies. Yeah, that's what he wanted <laughs> with to monsters. be. And Tom Cruise is a great actor. He's a really good actor, but I he mean, should not have been in the movie. No, listen, Brendan Fraser did it. All I right, mean, everybody, other, shut up. Other than the Mission Impossible movies, what else has he done recently that is not a Mission Impossible movie? I don't know. I don't... He just acts in Mission Impossible. He likes to watch himself run. He does. <laughs> yeah. He is cardio bound, <laughs> right? man. Every mission, we just watched the new Mission Impossible movie. Yeah. And he just runs. Hey, runs there's just runs. there's just shots of him just running. I want to talk about this movie. Okay, okay, yeah. I this is not a Mission to... Impossible. This, this is as above, as above so, so below. below. So this movie has everything that I love in a movie. Period. It has mm -hmm. action. It has ancient mythology. It has romance. It has romance. It has unrequited love. It has a guy going after a hoo ha. That That's is not it. true. L that this is, is not this true. First, first tip for this movie. Just don't follow the hoo-ha. Don't do it. <laughs> if you weren't following the hoo-ha, you would be safe. You would be fixing clocks. You would, you know, you would be nice in your bed at night, sleeping. No. But he has to follow the hoo-ha. Listen, what's the point of life if you can't be in love and follow your heart? If you can't heart? follow the hoo-ha? Well, I'm just saying. Like, okay. I don't think okay. his, his motivation was sexual. I think his motivation was What was that keep... sweet nectar of the gods? He was in love okay. with her. He was in love with Scarlet. And Call it what you will. I say it was the hoo-ha. All right. So <laughs> anyway, the, but you said you had a backstory. Yeah, I have a backstory for this. So when this movie filmed, the the film crew did actually get permission from the French government to film inside the catacombs. Okay. And where were they wanted? Uh, for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, but 
they obviously had to bring them supplies, make sure that they were all safe. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the French government was like, listen, we don't want to be sending any search parties or rescue parties down there. <laughs> we don't want to spend money. Right. Y'all have to. <laughs> so you get lost, it's on you. You're paying us. It had a five million dollar budget this entire really? movie. Really? Okay. It had almost no budget for props. Yeah. When they were filming, it was extremely difficult because they could, didn't have any cell service, so they couldn't even communicate with radios. Mm. There were no radio signals down there. There was very limited light. No walkie talkies or anything. Right. There was nothing. So like they really all it had to be like an eight man crew that mm -hmm. were like filming these things, and that was it. And then mm. they would come back and they would kind of then film in another section. I see. And from what you've told me, the actor, you know, the hoo-ha follower, he, um, he was actually claustrophobic. He was. He was actually claustrophobic. And I'm going to get his name for you. So Ben Feldman has a real claustrophobia. Oh, Ben. And in order to film, they said he took, we're going to be very light with this next sentence. He took a lot of toilet breaks to relieve himself quite frequently. He shat his pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he did. We are going to leave it. No, we're going to give him some dignity. And we're okay. going to say that he had, it was very difficult for him. He probably shat his pants every anyway, 30 minutes. So I just. But it came through in the film. His, he, his, his, his claustrophobia. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it added to his, the fear that he had. And I like that they incorporated it into the character, that his character was afraid of going underground mm -hmm. and had claustrophobia because his, his brother died. Because his brother died, uh, uh, drowned. He drowned. Drowned in a crate, in a cave. Yes. So Scarlet is the main character, Scarlet mm -hmm. and George. Scarlet is by far my favorite protagonist of pretty much any horror movie ever. Scarlet doesn't stop and think on anything. No. Nope. She just goes. But she also is she, like oh, a genius. We need to keep going. We need to keep going. Oh, he's dead. Leave him. We need to keep going. But, I'll cry for a second. Okay, done. We need to keep going. Well, the reason why I really love Scarlet is she is on a mission from mm. the very first scene of this movie to uphold her father's legacy. And she's, in turn, devoted her entire life to learning Egyptology, mm -hmm. ancient mythology. She knows four spoken languages, two dead ones. I mean, she's just a, a walking encyclopedia. Yeah. And uh, she wants to find the Philosopher's Stone. Yes. Yes. For, that was created by Nicholas Flamel, mm -hmm. who was the most famous alchemist. Yes. So I love that she wanted to do this. She tracks down George, who previously in a scene that we didn't get to see she left him in a turkish prison mm -hmm. and you can tell he is totally in love with her <laughs> yeah this is, this is the who i'm talking about <laughs> he is in love with scarlet and he basically would do anything that she asked him to do but he tries to resist yeah he's like no i don't want to go i don't want to go but i am going i don't want to go okay let's go <laughs> yeah so um so they convince a team mm-hmm First, they go and they find the tablet. And I, I mean, every scene in this is fantastic. It starts out where it's a little bit creepy. You see, like, her dead hanging um, father. Well, yeah, because it starts out and they're in not Iran. in France. Right? right, they're in Iran. And right. she's tracking down the uh, the rose statue, which is, yeah. you know, the the translator mm -hmm. for what the tablet for Nicholas Flamel's gravestone. And I think this is where everything starts kind of like, you know, to hit the fan. It does. Well, I don't think it hits the fan quite then. Because, mm. remember, they have to translate the tablet. At this point, it's a little bit like just an adventure Yeah, but movie. when she's there, she sees her hanging dead father. She does. And she doesn't realize it. Yeah. Or maybe she does. Maybe she just sees a hanging guy. I, I don't know why. That image would be burned in your mind and you would know that that was your father. Yeah. But I think she probably ignores it because she's so single-minded in wanting to to uphold her father's legacy mm -hmm. that nothing else exists mm. like it doesn't even it, she could see a demon just crawl out from the depths and tell her listen this is going to lead you to hell yeah. and she'd be like okay okay let's go will i get the philosopher's stone yeah that that let's would be it. that would be her thing mm -hmm. and so when she goes to to nicholas flamel's gravestone and she does the little chemical thing I know that that's totally unrealistic at all. <laughs> that's not going to happen. But it was like such a fun moment. Yeah, this is the national treasure moment. Oh, it's such like, a national treasure yeah. moment. I thought Nicolas Cage was going to come out of the 
Doing good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Good job. Yeah, good job. Come find me for a yeah. job later. Next, we'll steal a constitution. <laughs> right? I just thought it was so great. And I love that George the entire time is like, I'm just going to go here. And I'm just, oh, no, I'm just going to walk you to the cave. No, no, now I'm in the cave. No, no, okay, okay. I didn't want to come here. It's just the cops <laughs> wrestled us inside. Right. <laughs> you could have just gotten caught and go to prison. Yeah. Yeah, you could have. Yeah. So when they get into the cave, it's after they've gone. So I believe that um, Le Toup mm-hmm. w- was the person that they saw in the toured catacombs who yeah. led them to Papillon. Who told them, listen, Papillon will yeah. help you. I think that that was the ghost Which, of Le Toup. He was a spirit? Was he a demon? Because it wasn't. So uh, we see him and, you know, they interact with him, but then we see him again and he kills the lady and. He's not seen again. So was that a demon? Was that actually him? Was it a spirit? I think that that was the demon version of Le Toup. I think Which it, was on yeah, the on, on the, the other, other side. side. Mm. So I think he must have died in the catacombs. There's one version of himself that is this, his, like a spirit. And there's another version of himself that is the demon. just condemned and, and a demon. Mm. Okay. And at least that's what I think. Okay. I, the thing that I love about this movie that probably... Anyone who doesn't like this movie, this is probably why you don't like it, mm. is that it's it leaves some open ends, mm. and it's also very complex. I see. And I think, you know, it's... But it's also very basic, like... Yeah, I, um, there's some things that I wish they, they'd explained a little bit better. Um, like the... I find that, like, the reasoning for the Philosopher's Stone, okay, she found it, and one side it works, but on the other side... She is the stone. If she believes she's the stone or she can make it happen, she has superpowers now. Or is it because since she's from the other side and that side, all the humans from the other side that go to that other side, then they have powers. I don't know. It's not all that clear. The way that I perceived that was that when you're on one side, that is the philosopher's stone. Mm. But once you take it away, if you take it out of the, the crypt... The only way to truly get the the true essence of the philosopher's stone and take it with you mm. is to is to return it. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of, it, it it's kind of like you haven't taken it out like the yet. same lore of kind of like the the full ma- full metal alchemist anime, uh, not the manga, not the second anime, the first one. Uh, I think it was called Brotherhood, where that was the idea where there was there were two separate universes and one had uh, alchemy while the other didn't have alchemy. They had Science. science. Yeah. yeah. And then the alchemy one took the energy and essence from the other one. And they kind of like both co-mingled and coexisted. Yeah. And I didn't, I know that they said that when they crawled through that, uh, that entrance, it said like, this is the, the entrance to hell. Mm-hmm. And I love that. But I didn't get the sense that as above, so below was a representation of good versus evil. Mm. I thought it was a representation of what is inside versus what is outside. Yeah, but at the end, they're not in their own universe. See, I disagree. That's a di- no. That's a different universe because they went to that other side where the sign was even upside down, and they went through the whole steps backwards, even going further down, and they came up in that random. Un- that was not their universe. See, I think that hell was the center. So I think they went forward, they experienced hell, and then they went back. To a different universe. I think they went back to the same one. No, I don't think so. I don't think so because it was, you know, you go to the center and there are two halves. I mean, that would be interesting. And then they went to one half, but not to their half. It, it would have been interesting if they went to a half where the magic exists, where now she is the Philosopher's Stone. Yeah. As opposed to the other universe where there's no possible way that could happen. Yeah, that could that'd be, could be cool. That, that would that, be really cool. That would be an interesting thought. But um, did this movie make any money? $44 million. Okay, they it's never... So... They didn't do a, a sequel or anything. It's just... I mean, it's good. It's a good movie. It starts and it ends. But I would... I would be interested to see more. No, I want more of this universe so badly. Like she has to go back to the catacombs or something to look for something? Or it could be that they realize they're in another universe and they start mm-hmm. to explore the, basically the science or the magic of this universe. And they... But then it would turn into sliders. Uh, how so? Because you think they could hop universes? Cause I, no, I because they're that. just in another universe. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it would be. But I think it would be kind of interesting... To just see, see, this is a thing. If they've done this movie, it's automatically assumed that the sequel would be 
a horror movie. Mm. But my but remember how great Evil Dead was when it sort of transcended and it went from being really serious to being really to campy. campy. Yeah. I remember how it happened on the was? second one, which the second one was kind of like a remake reimagining of the first one. Yeah. But campy. So and then the third one that's just that's just comedy. Just silly. Yeah. So do you remember how wonderful that was? I actually would really appreciate a return to that mm. where in a universe like this, movie makers created something where the sequel was just suddenly had nothing to do with horror, but just them investigating. And then the third one was like, okay, we got back to our universe, but now it's a sliders thing. It's not that universe. It's something else. And now it is horror again. Kind of like, like, like the Cloverfield movies. Was that the Cloverfield? I, th I thought yeah, it was so, all supposed to be horror. So, the first one is a uh, shaky cam footage. Right. The second one is kind of like it is horror, but it's kind of it's a different type of horror. It and is. when you see it, people really didn't like that movie. I liked it, but they were like, "This has nothing to do with the first movie." It doesn't, but it does because it's, it's in, in the, the same universe. universe. Yes. And they're at the end of that movie. If you haven't seen it, there's a spoiler for Cloverfield, the second Sorry. one. Yeah. At the end of uh, that movie. You can you see that there's something wrong. There's either being any innovations, something is really messed up happening yeah. in the universe, and it ends. Yeah, but yeah. it's still a horror movie. It is still a horror movie. I mean, any woman who's being afraid of being kidnapped knows yeah. that's a horror movie. That's a horror movie. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about survival. Okay. All right. I'm sure there are people out there watching this who have been in the catacombs. Don't go to the catacombs. Solved. <laughs> okay. You know, you know why I have never been lost in the catacombs? Because you've never been there. Because I've never been to the catacombs. In fact, I've never even stepped foot in the old world. <laughs> okay. I'm in the new world. <laughs> All right. Well, if you go to the old world and you would like an unofficial tour of the catacombs, you can track people down at um, the park. <laughs> at the park? I go to a park. Hey, uh, you got some catacomb tours? Give well, you a hundred dollars. You can find them. You yeah. can find them. Yeah, when I'm, I went to Paris, I found them. <laughs> maybe, maybe don't do that. Maybe don't. No, or do. I mean, it's a wonderful experience. You got to go. Okay. However, you have to be you have to be someone like with Papillon. They mm. should have listened to Papillon in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did. They did, but they didn't. Mm. How so? Once things started to go awry, so they crawled over the bones. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, what, we're back where we started? What's going on? They questioned Papillon at every turn. Why is your tag here? What's going on? And he was like, my tag wasn't here. The, this shouldn't I've never be been here. here. I don't know. I don't know. And they were like, they, they just think he's a liar. Why would he lie? Everybody's life is on the line. Yeah, but then they're, they're, they're uh, following um, the mole. Too. Yeah. The, the go a ghost, La Toupe. So when they, when they follow La Toupe, so at this point, like, there really is no more option, in my opinion, except for to keep moving forward. Yeah, you can't go back. Yeah, Scarlet is a rock star in this movie. She's never afraid, no, not even like, once. There was a phone ringing. I'm going to pick it up. Right. She just... A decent disembodied voice. That is my father. Talked on the other side. Ah, just forget it. Right. Don't talk about it to no one. Right. They're like, that's weird. Well, I guess we got to keep moving. All right. Nobody asked. That's some of the things that I was like, in reality, it was a phone. It was ringing. Who was it? What did right. they say? Did they tell you what they wanted? Let's call back. Let's see. Let's try 911. <laughs> let's let me call my house. Let me call someone. So the line works. We should try a whole bunch of things before just running off. Yeah. But I guess they ran off because it, the roof was kind of like breaking. Yeah, that was not okay. I mean, mm. there's my survival tips is just to be like Scarlet. Mm. Really, just have no fear. You've got to just use your head and you've got to try and just keep moving forward. You know what she did? What? She did my rule. She got she, upset. She got upset because yes. anger trumps fear 100% of the time. Of the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's true. And whenever they encountered some interesting stuff, it's like she and George just started to kind of understand and play with it and mm -hmm. look at the history and, and figure it out. Yeah. And then that's why this movie is perfect. It is perfect. I mean, it's not perfect. It is. It's a good movie, but it's not perfect. How is it not perfect? So, okay. This is, this will go into more tips. Like the cameraman. What was his name? Benji? Benji. So Benji. In Benji's demise, right? Mm -hmm. He is the last one to climb down. 
and after seeing everything that's happening, right, and hearing voices, he decides to call for the voices. Oh, I know. And grabs the camera. Is anybody there? Hello? Listen, if there's somebody, if there's somebody there, it ain't your problem. Just leave them be. Just, right? Just that's go down. That's not your business. Yeah. You are focused on trying to survive. Yeah. And we don't really uh, understand what was it that got him. Yeah, that was a mystery. Because we don't know what his... We don't know his backstory. His backstory. He was just a guy trying to do a documentary. Yeah, yeah. Who the, apparently had invested in all of his equipment. Yeah. And the documentary did him. Yeah, the I mean, Benji, out of everybody, is the person that I feel for the most. Mm. Because he just wanted to do a documentary on Scarlet and her search for the Philosopher's Stone. He didn't really want to get... None like, of this. None of the craziness, <laughs> right? you know? I, I I also really felt for Claudette too. Like she, she was. I mean, she was she, just friend of Papillon, Papillon, right? Yeah, she was friends with Papillon, and she was trying to help Le Put, Le yeah. Tut, yeah. Le Put, Le Put, Le Tut, the mole, Le, le Tut. Yeah, the mole, French the for mole. the mole. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think the the scene where he's kind of like crawling through the bones, but Another thing, it's bones. You, why are you freaking out? You have never eaten chicken or a steak or or a, or a bone and ribeye, you know. First of all, if they were wet, you know, and filled with blood and icky, I would understand. But they're just dried bones. They're not gonna do anything. In fact, you can you can use them as weapons. You can use them, you know, to dig. You can use them for a lot of things. I feel. Why was he freaking out because of the bones? He was freaking out because of the claustrophobia. Mm, you think it was that? Yes, it was the claustrophobia. It was the tight space. He was freaking out. I can sort of understand it, but I really needed him to calm down. Mm. Okay. And he did. He did. Another thing that I didn't like, well, not that I didn't like, see, it had really cool elements, but they weren't all that well explained. Mm. Like the cult. At one point, when they're starting their journey, there's a cult, and there's this lady that they see previously, but it's not really explained what does she want. Was she a stalker? Did she knew what was going to happen? Had she been to the other side? See, um, why were they singing? What were they? What were they singing? Are those the same people that had the robes in black when they're on the other side? So many questions, but no answers. But see, I liked that. Why? Because I liked that it fit with. So there was this. She went to Iran. She found this tablet. Mm-hmm. She. They're talking about it in the catacombs mm-hmm. and like what they're gonna do, and then they immediately get some disembodied you know, person that tells them, okay, you've got to go to visit Papillon at this place. So they go find Papillon and they see that girl at the club. Mm -hmm. I think that that was the beginning. The grungy makeup. Yes. That was the beginning of sort of the, the ghostly haunted element that knew, okay, we're going to have some visitors. Mm. And I think that they just, they knew. I think that those were. But spirits. they knew ever since she she found the the other. I think so. Writings. I think the moment that she broke through that seal in Iran they in those out. tunnels, I think that that released it, and I think, I think that she was marked, hmm. of as saying, okay, she's gonna try and come and find the philosopher's stone. Let's see if she's worthy. Hmm. Okay, okay. And that was my perception of it because I romanticize everything. <laughs> I do. I love the romanticization of this idea that because once the cult started to sing, mm-hmm. they unleashed mm-hmm. another piece. Mm-hmm. They unleashed something else that meant that that tunnel wasn't going to lead them straight through. Yeah, it let them kind of like into the mirror yes. verse. Yeah, and mm. I think that that was that was what it was. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So I loved pretty much every aspect of this. I loved. Her, my favorite part of this whole film mm-hmm. is two two things. The first one was when they were figuring out that puzzle, that Egyptian puzzle yeah. to pull the seventh stone out. Yeah. And I just thought that was such a cool element. Yeah, I was like, okay, so it's the Earth. Oh, but at the time, they didn't know that the Earth wasn't the center of the universe, so they thought the Earth was the center right? of the universe. So they considered the sun to be a planet and the moon, so they had... X amount total planets. Right. When this was taking place. That was awesome. Yeah. My second favorite one was Scarlet's speed mm-hmm. run. Right. Back. So at one point, which that was <laughs> that was a really interesting a really interesting take on these devilish creatures where 
Um, Milo, are you okay? I just keep talking, baby. Um, it was a really interesting take where they were kind of like stuck to the wall, but then all of, all of a sudden, one of them popped out and just munched on his neck. Yeah. Yeah, the stone stone demon. The stone creatures. And then she's like, okay, I can't save him. I need to save him. Oh, I need to go back through all the muck and all the things that right? we just went through. Right, the last 30 minutes I have to do it. And at this point, I was like, oh, she has to do a speed run. Yeah. She has to do a Super Mario Brothers two-minute speed run of the whole game to go there to basically find nothing. Because she went all the way back. She put the little stone there, and she found nothing. Well, like, she didn't find nothing. She found she found rectification. The meaning, yeah, for that she can yeah. do it herself because she believes in Because herself. as above, so below. As is outside me is inside me. Mm. Yes. Milo, you're going to fall. He's not going to fall. <laughs> yeah, so in that speed run, something I loved, a couple of elements. The first one was when she went through the stone demon monster. Twice. They, twice. They put this <laughs> smack sound when she yeah. hit him in the face. Smack, like, get out of here. Like, like it was very cartoonish. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, yeah, that's what you do when you're speed running. That's what you do. You got to go through everything. Yeah. And she's just running. And then when she's running back, smack, he smacks the same guy. And I just imagined. Yeah, this demon is like, oh, okay. 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 It takes like four minutes for him to get back Okay, I'm getting up. Does that really hurt? I'm gonna, and here comes this lady, smack. She was the demon <laughs> to the demon. She right? was the demon to the demon. Yes. Yeah. That's what I imagined. She just smacked him twice. She didn't care. Just, <laughs> just a fistful of camera in his so face. My, my other favorite part of that is that we get the fru- the to get the culmination and the and the final fruition of this idea of what is as above, so below. What's the journey they've been taking this whole time when she goes back and replaces the Philosopher's Stone? Mm. It's realized that it isn't a physical object because that would defeat the purpose of the philosophy of as above, so below. It isn't a physical object in the mirrorverse. In the mirrorverse. In this verse, it is, but then if you take it away, Mm. that means that you haven't actually, it's not as above, so below. Because mm, okay, okay. then, because what it's supposed to be inside of you. Yes. So I loved, I loved that concept and how they played with it because the Milo, are you okay? He doesn't want me. He's like, nah, I want to go away. So okay. just stay there. You're gonna so, fall, buddy. So w- what I just thought was incredible is that this concept of as above, so below has been around for thousands of years, mm. and it's really. It was just so, played with so well mm. that these characters were physically going through this like Dante's Inferno. Um, so that really struck me. I just love the history of it. And I love the concept of like what was real witchcraft back in the day and what does that really mean for the philosophy of everything. And I also, I also think that when they were going and they got to this chamber, they really missed an opportunity with the, um, with the Knights Templar. They did. Because uh, even watching it the first time around, this is the second time I watched this movie, the first time around I was like, oh, he's going to get up. Oh, he's going to get up. At least, you know, <laughs> look at them, tell them something interesting. But no, he just lied there. And then they see it in the mirror universe where he's rotting out. He's rotting, like, yeah. Okay, this is the one that is going to get up and, you know, scare the bitch. But they didn't. They just hired a guy, painted it up, and you just lie there and yeah. look, look not dead, but dead at the same time. Well, it's interesting that in the night, the Knights Templar was the, the guardian of a lot of these these crypts and these tombs that held and, really important and mythical ancient. stuff yeah so i love that touch like the cup of christ you know yeah. the long linus sphere i think yeah. it was called um all that all that stuff that the nazis were after yes. allegedly yeah yeah so i just thought it was really all the details in this movie made me very happy i think because at my at my heart um i just love any movie about archaeology mm. But now for survival tips. Because, okay, if you do what she does, well, there you go. She survived. She survived. She survived. But I feel like the other characters, I mean, the the guy, you know, the one that was after the hoo-ha, he just, sur- he just survived because of her plot shield. She kind of gave him a little bit of plot shield. She did. But and the other the other guy of the, the one of the... Zed. Yeah, Zed. He was just blind luck. Yeah, well, 
he, I think, so it's interesting that everybody who lived to see the Hellgate, who lived past that, past the as above, so below moment. Mm -hmm. Like before then, the ones who died, they died. Yes. But Which before then, the ones that died was uh, the lady that got killed by Toop. No. Yeah, Le Toop. Le Toop. No, she, she crossed it or no? The first chamber over. Yeah. She was, her, she was physically killed yes. by the demon. Mm. But I think the other ones were, were killed by their own sins, by the, the things that they denied, by yeah. their own fears. Papillon was killed by, he was just sucked into a car. I think that Papillon was the only one of them that if he had died in the real world, he would have gone to hell. Mm. Because of whatever he did, because he said it wasn't my fault, it wasn't my fault. But th but he was the only one that was physically like they were like, no, nope, you are coming with right? us and no then, matter and, what. And then he was buried, which they could have buried him. They could have, you know, buried him out. I I, I don't. They I could they could have digged him out. It was his his feet were right there. Yeah, I guess. Unless there was somebody munching on him, you know, under the ground. We'll never know. We'll never know. <laughs> And then there's uh, Benji, which we don't even know what his backstory is. Yeah, we don't know what Benji's demon was. Benji just made wrong choices. Yeah? Yeah, Benji just... Yes, okay, he did. So he's the last one. I don't, I don't necessarily... I'm not an expert at repelling, but I feel like you don't need to be the only person at the top. Like, why don't you just start repelling as, quick, like, as quickly as to say, okay, we're down repel like who cares what sounds you there's hear? nobody there's nobody up there nowhere nobody's gonna help you if you if you fall if it is someone it's latup and you just saw him murder someone so right? maybe you need to get away from him right yeah i'll yeah. just be and then that lady she was just she just don't try, try to help people that um live underground i guess that's, well, that's no, her survival tip i think claudette's survival tip is i don't think that she should have tried to approach Latup in mm. the way that she did. Everybody around her was saying, don't do it, don't do it. Yeah, don't. be She's careful, like, don't do it. Just throw a rock at him or something. Well, no, but... Yeah, I would have thrown... I would have took him... I would have taken my, my shoe. I just... I would throw my shoe at him. I, hey, are you there? Clank, hit him in the face. Oh, sorry, sorry. Did, did it hurt? Did you move? <laughs> yeah. Are you going to say something? Like, are you speaking? Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. So this is Latup character. This is another reason why you should always have... An everyday carry knife. You know? You throw a shoe at him. He's not all that good. You know? Oh, you got your knife. <laughs> stabby stabby. <laughs> the pointy end, stabby stabby. There you go. I will say. If it's a demon, you're shit out of luck. The knife ain't going to do nothing. I, yes. And I will say, I think that you shouldn't get close to someone that has been lost in a cave for two years. I think you should wait until you what, do they assess eat? their mental... Right? What does he eat? Yeah. How does he? But if you're climbing, you did, should keep a utility. Did he take a shower? He must have stunk if he was a real person and not right? a demon. It's just there were a lot of indicators that this person probably should not be approached. Right. And how did he get haircuts? <laughs> Two years and his hair was pretty short and he yeah. didn't have any facial fe facial hairs. Yeah, there so, was a lot of mystery there that she just ignored. Everybody ignored. Maybe she was a really compassionate person and she just no, had No, she wasn't. I mean, clearly she was. No, you know, she was compassionate to the floor with her face. Wow. <laughs> That's what she was. All right. She was like, ha ha. We're going to move ha -ha. on. Whoa, whoa. Ha -ha. All right, we're going to move on. So, I think... Well, she was just blind luck. The, uh, I think most of them that survived, uh, the only guy that survived was just luck. Yeah, I... Or you just had... And he didn't have any demons. Well, yeah. no, he talked about it before they jumped into the hole. That he had a son that he'd never seen. Yes, Zed did. And he was at one point, he like that. Is that the baby. little kid that, 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 that we see? No, well, it, there's a couple little kids. But the, okay. little, the main little kid that we see is George's brother. Okay, okay. But there was a baby that really? he saw. Oh, I didn't, yeah. I didn't catch that part. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, so I guess, you know, no baby's going to, ah, and kill him. I mean, that would have been a, a, uh, a, a, wild, a wild murder. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say earlier. Like, at least his, his one demon was a baby. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> or they could have done a, a, a train spotting type of deal where there's just a baby crawling in the ceiling. Oh. And then his, his head turns 100, uh, 180 degrees and looks at you and then jumps at you. Yeah, yeah. no, that's not okay. Yeah. Good movie, too, train spotting. You should watch it. 
sounds awful. Is it a horror movie? We should watch it. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a horror. I feel like if the baby's head spins around, it's probably a horror movie. Yeah, yeah. We, should, we should do. Leave a comment down below if you want us to do train spotting. <laughs> Not right. the second one, although the second one is pretty good too. <laughs> We've learned from Patrick Stewart's book. Uh -huh. That train spotting is an actual thing that used to happen where people would just sit on hills and spot trains yeah, as they went I by look at on track. And get excited when there were they fancy were so trains. so excited about Man, fancy trains. That, old times were wild. Right? You got no internet. You got, you know, that's how you, you just have fun by looking at trains. Yeah. I would recommend that everybody who is a fan of pretty much anything read... Patrick Stewart's yeah. book, which is called Making, Making it, it So. so. We have it up here somewhere. Yeah. I think it's in the corner there. Because it's just so great. Yeah, we haven't finished it we yet. We haven't though. finished it yet. Yeah. I'll put a link a link for it down in the Yeah, box. once you start it, it's like, did he really li live? It, it sounds like he lived 200 years ago. Right? It just sounds like it's so far ago, when it was really not that long ago. It was yeah. like 70 years ago. Yeah, 80-something, so, I think. So, this movie... I think has a wonderful depiction of mysticism, horror, adventure, mm -hmm. a love story where like in the end, George and Scarlett kind of admit their feelings to each other. Okay. And I love okay, it. Let's talk about this ending. Okay. So at the end, they must acknowledge that they have issues, right? Yes. So this is like, this is intense um, speed running of psychology. Right? right. And they got a therapist and this is your speed running your recovery. Right. That's so what like, you're doing. Listen, admit all of your faults uh, right now. Right now. If you have any demons And we jump through this hole. If you don't hole. do it, we'll die right here yeah. with the demons. So yeah. this is like, you're going to speed run your recovery. Right. So listen, if you, I've said, I've talked about interpersonal relationships are extremely important in horror movies uh -huh. where you need to trust each other enough to talk to them. Well, in this one, it doesn't matter what your relationships are with other people. It matters what your relationship is with yourself. With yourself, right? And if you have like, demons, you need to yeah. be willing to spew them out and talk right. about them. Right. They're right there. They're going to get you. There's yeah. this giant hole. You need to... This is a speed run. Yeah. You got to do it, and you got to do it quick. Because as above, so below. Mm -hmm. So if you hold on to it, it's going to come out and physically get you. Yeah. Yeah. So they jump. Right, and then then the guy uh, that is not the main characters, he's freaking out because he thinks they're stuck. Yeah. Right, and this is an interesting part. Of it. They see a manhole. They're like, okay, try to pull the manhole because you know gravity states that if you're on the floor, you're gonna want to you open it. Pull it up. It. Yeah, but no, right there they realize that they push it in, and beneath them there's a street. Yes. So gravity is different from where they are to the other place. To the other side. They the are not place. they are not in their reality. They're in a different separate universe. That is what I believe. I think that would be interesting. I originally when I saw this movie think that this was a full loop where they went mm. down to hell and then when they went back it was a return. The the entire yeah, thing was but a they return. didn't go through so they're they're basically walking in a straight line and they never they got to the to the center and they never went back they kept on going forward yeah but remember in, at first when they went through that the the bone tunnel they said it should be straight it shouldn't have curved how is it a loop yeah but that's because the you know the entity or whatever wanted them to go to that other place yeah but i think that it was all a loop no, I don't think so. What do you think? Yeah, what do, do you think? you think it was a loop? So Leave a comment down below. I would love to hear about how you guys survived this movie and what you thought your best and worst parts of it were. What did you love and hate about it? It has a terrible review on Rotten Tomato. I think it's got like 20% or something. Really? No. But I, in personally, obviously, good. you know, I, I think it. this movie is amazing. I liked it more than Five Nights at Freddy. Yeah, a lot of people did. I mean, it's my favorite Five Nights at Freddy doesn't top this movie. No, I, yeah, no, it doesn't. It no. doesn't. Um, so, interesting movie. Interesting movie. So, if you find yourself actually um, in France, in the catacombs, don't wander off. Right, don't separate. From don't your separate group. because in real life, you know, people have disappeared and died, and then they found them, I don't know, like five or ten years later, just rotting. Yeah. Because yeah. it's dark. 
and once you lose yourself, once you get lost, you're lost. Once you're disoriented, whatever in a whatever dark place, battery you yeah. have, whatever light source, unless it's a little dynamo that you can squeeze to have like a second of light, you're not gonna have any light for long. Yeah. And being stuck in a dark corridor underground with millions and millions of dead bodies. Probably not the best way to die. Not the best way to spend a Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, it isn't. Why is it Thanksgiving? I mean, because we're coming up to the November now, you know. I see. <laughs> and if you're going to be down there, you just got there in October, you know, you're going to probably live for a while if you have some water. You can, you know, find water in mugs. So, you know, not a nice way to spend no. Thanksgiving. That's you know? true. That's spend true. it with family. Spend not it with, with family. Not with the, not with in, the dead of the catacombs the in France. <laughs> You know, unless your family's coming with you and you all get lost together. If you all get lost together, at least you can eat the weakest one. You, know? you heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're stuck in the catacombs and you're lost with friends, eat the weakest one. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't do that, but, um. You have to, you have to live. <laughs> that is the tip of survival. Okay. They well... should have eaten Papillon. Oh, pa you think Papillon was the weakest link there? No, actually, it was the other one that survived. Zed. <laughs> Zed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He just freaked out during the whole the really whole way. He really did. And just, he was he was just lucky. He was he was such an inconsequential character that I forgot he existed. Yeah, me too. It was like, oh, so they're they're alone. Oh no, there's this other guy. Who's oh, yeah, this other Zed. guy? <laughs> Who's this other guy again? Poor he did, Zed. He did nothing. He had almost no screen on time. Yeah. And he was he was just there. So they would have a reason to someone holding the camera. It's true. Yeah. It's true. They needed a third camera. They needed a third camera. They couldn't have just, you know, A camera, B camera. They needed a C camera. Yeah. And that was his, the, the cameraman, sa being the cameraman saved them. <laughs> yes, it did. So we did have plot shield. Yeah. He, he had, had production plot shield. Yeah, he had production <laughs> plot shield. Cameraman, cameraman shield. Pro tip. Have production plot shield. Yeah. If you find yourself in a horror movie situation, grab the camera. See if you can like be the person who's the, like the narrator. Yeah. Documenting. <laughs> You're the documenter. You have to remember just write everything down. Write everything down. You need to suddenly... grab your camera. Yeah. If your phone camera dies, you need you need to charge that phone and start recording right. quick, quick because that is what's gonna make you survive. <laughs> right. Be the the the, the documentarian. documentarian. Yes. <laughs> yes. And ask questions. Go and interview people. Do go all the way. Yeah. So, how do you feel about this situation? We're about, we're about to get murdered by <laughs> by this axe wielding serial killer. How do you feel? Right. And then you know you, you do the switcheroo. You're looking at the front facing camera, and then the switch. Yeah. Yeah. You say, so we're stuck in the catacombs. We've been here for a while. It looks like mm -hmm. you're covered in blood. Yeah. How do you feel? I'm kind of I'm kind of hungry. I'm a, a, a little thirsty. How do you feel? What do you think we should yeah. do right now in this situation? Oh, it looks like the the ceiling is gonna cave in, and we're probably gonna die in the next ten seconds. But hey, tell me what you feel. Hey. Tell me about your feelings. The other thing, find the main characters and stick with them. Right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this this could be tricky because in this part. You're, you're acknowledging that you are not the main character. That's true. And if you're the main character and you're looking for who's the main character, then you might be what if you, for what everybody if you, will you push, die. You push your main characterness away from you. Right? But every, I mean, everybody's the main character in their own story. Yeah, but not in horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> Either you all die or... Or you oh, find the main character. Oh, sweetie, of course, you know who the main character is. Who is it? It's always going to be the last girl standing, duh. Oh, yeah, the you last girl standing. You always find the last girl standing. Yeah, just, just look at her. If she's white and she has big bazungas, <laughs> she, is, she is the one that's going to survive. One. Right, and if she's wearing a tank top. Yeah, she needs to wear a tank top. <laughs> and she needs to not have had sex. Why? Because that's the That rule. makes no sense. In this one, we should probably had sex. Not, no, not on screen. She didn't. Oh, yeah, she did Because remember, screen. if you have sex on screen, you're going to get killed. That's not true. There's probably, listen, there's a lot of trauma movies, you know, uh, the toxic of anger, all those type of movies. I'm pretty sure some girls, you can see everything and they survive. Pretty sure. It's classic. If, if, there's, if there's somebody out there that's seen a trauma movie or, or some crappy deep power movie that this these rules quote unquote rules don't apply let us know write in a comment down below so thank you so much for joining us please remember to be brave be vigilant and be the last one standing always <laughs>